Ahlan Biko. When I lived in Egypt about 10 years ago, way before Salma and I knew how to cook, there was this place doing a special variety of shawarma called Ebu Haydar that we used to eat from every week. They make the most flavorful and juicy Egyptian meat shawarma that is stuffed into soft and fluffy buns. And it's no exaggeration to say we were obsessed. Every bite of the buns is packed with killer flavors and succulent shawarma. And they're so good, literally everyone who tries them is equally obsessed. Wow. Unfortunately, it is so rare to find this style of shawarma outside Egypt. But the good news is you can get a taste of Abu Haydar's addictive sandwiches right at home using our recipe. And it's pretty easy. Making these sandwiches is actually really simple. All you do is mix strips of meat with a beef shawarma marinade, cook it until tender, then add some tahini sauce and salad. You then assemble that in some soft buns and serve. All in all, it takes less than half an hour of active time to make them and they're so worth it. Plus you can make it on the cheap or fancy and expensive. In today's recipe, I'm going the fancy way by using beef ribeye, but it's important to note that this recipe works with pretty much any cut of meat. We've done it before with beef topside and chuck, but even ribs or lamb shoulder will work. All you need is a joint that has good texture and flavor, and preferably some good intermuscular fat like this ribeye. Tougher cuts will just need to marinate and cook a little longer, but it's so worth it. Let's craft that perfect bite by starting with the meat. I put the meat in my freezer for about an hour so it can firm up, and then I sliced it into steaks about one centimeter thick. Once I sliced them, I stacked a few steaks on top of each other and cut along the short side to make them into strips. As I'm using ribeye, the strips are already really tender with loads of great fat, and that will melt during the cooking, giving us a soft bite. Now it's time to make the magic marinade that not only infuses the meat with tons of Egyptian flavors, but also tenderizes the meat so it ends up extra succulent. The key to this tenderizing marinade is using onion pulp to break down the proteins in the meat, which softens any tough fibers and protein strands that usually make meat chewy. So you either grate an onion on a grater, or if you're lazy like me, roughly chop it and use a blender to grind it down to a pulp. This is how fine it should be. Next, it's time to add the secret flavoring, which 99% of shawarma recipes don't include. These are an orange and lemon. Their skins carry loads of citrus oils that are key to the flavor of Egyptian shawarma. So I'm gonna zest the skins using a microplane. You need the zest of one whole lemon, which is about half a tablespoon, and the zest of one whole orange, which is about one tablespoon. I added the lemon zest and the orange zest to the onion, and then it's time for the seasonings. These are quite simple, starting with some salt, followed by a good amount of black pepper, some sumac for tanginess, and lastly a little baharat or seven spice, which is a mix of Middle Eastern spices. After that, I added in a good glug of white vinegar, and all that's left is to mix it all together. The resulting marinade is one of the best that I've ever smelt. It has a wonderful citrusy aroma and a very light amount of spice. This is gonna make the beef incredible. All that's left is to combine them, and you can marinate the beef in the pot to save yourself some washing, but I added them together in a bowl and then mixed it together really well until every piece of meat is well coated in the marinade. Once it looks like this, you should let it marinate as long as you can. Tough cuts of meat should be left for three to 12 hours or even overnight, but for something as tender as ribeye, just 30 to 60 minutes will be plenty of time. After the meat is done marinating, it should start looking really tender and falling apart. That's a good sign that it's ready to cook. We're gonna do this low and slow and give the meat plenty of time to soften, meaning a slow cooker is perfect for this. I don't have one, so I grabbed a large stainless steel pot with a lid, added the meat, and every last drop of the flavorful marinade. Then I leveled it out. I nestled in some green chilies and a plump tomato to cook with the meat. Here I'm using two jalapenos, but use whatever chilies you want for a kick you can handle. Put the pot on high heat to bring the meat up to temperature, and once the pot has come to a steamy boil, turn it down to low. At this point, you just want to let the meat cook low and slow until it's tender, but there is an optional ingredient you can add that makes it extra succulent. That is a small amount of animal fat. I'm using lamb tail fat, which can be a little hard to get in some countries, so use some beef or duck fat if you can get those instead. The fat will melt into the pot as it cooks, making the meat juicier and adding some extra flavor. Once it was added, I covered the pot and turned the heat to medium low. Cooking the meat can take anywhere from half an hour to two hours, depending upon the cut of meat. And the only way to know if it's ready is to check it with a fork and see if it's tender. If not, you'll keep adding extra 50 minute chunks at a time until it is cooked. And whenever you check it, make sure the pot contains liquid so the meat doesn't burn. 
This is a great time to start on the sauce and accompaniments that take the sandwich to the next level. I'm using our classic goes great on anything tahini sauce as it's the perfect creamy tahini for, well, anything. And to make it, I combined tahini and yogurt in a mixing bowl and I added some water to thin it out plus some freshly squeezed lemon juice for flavor. I want this super creamy, so I adjusted the water until it was good. Then I seasoned it with some salt, black pepper, cumin and a little chili powder. I gave that one more mix to combine and then I was left with this amazing tahini sauce. It's super flavorful, extremely creamy and a perfect balance to the meatiness of the shawarma. Other than the sauce, I made some macerated sumac onions to add to the shawarma at the end of cooking. They add an additional layer of tang and texture to the sandwiches. I sliced the red onion into strips like this, then in a bowl I added a little salt and some sumac. I want these to wilt slightly, so I massage the salt and sumac into the onions with my hand, which also helps to separate the layers, and then I let them sit for about 15 minutes. I also took a small bunch of parsley which had the thick stalks removed and chopped it up into fairly small pieces. This also gets added at the end of cooking. And since those both go into the meat, I wanted a separate salad that can cut through the flavours of the shawarma, so I made a simple tomato salad as well. This is just more macerated onions combined with some sliced tomatoes and some chopped parsley. It's not exactly traditional for Egyptian shawarma, but all of those components exist in the sandwich and it just makes them feel a little fresher. And by now our patience will have paid off. Just look at this texture. The meat is almost perfect. I just need to leave the meat uncovered over medium heat to cook off the excess liquid and develop some browning. And now after 15 minutes, it is absolutely spot on. Look how great the color is and how tender the meat has become. The tomato and chilies have also broken down and dissolved into the shawarma, leaving the mix smelling super flavorful. I cut the heat and let it cool for about 10 minutes before adding the last components. First in is a couple tablespoons of the creamy tahini sauce, which will bind everything together. I then added most of the red onions, which by now have softened, and then a large handful of the chopped parsley. Everything got a good mix to make sure it's well combined, and then we were left with this dreamy shawarma mixture. It's one of the few foods that is guaranteed to make me drool every time. Now you can serve this in a bread roll or by wrapping it in flatbread, but if you want to do it right and experience the joy of Ebu Haydar, here's how you make the famous sandwiches. You'll need some soft buns like these brioche ones, which you'll coat the inside with a good amount of tahini. You'll then fill it with plenty of the shawarma mix so it's bursting with flavor and texture. God, these look so good. Another way you can serve it is in a bread roll, which we call frinsewi, meaning French in Egypt. Add some tahini sauce, and this time I'm adding a layer of the tomato salad as well. Top that with shawarma and some extra sauce to guarantee a drool-worthy meal. Mm. Mm. That is a top tier sandwich and it's just like the ones in Egypt. It is packed full of juices and flavor. And so this week, instead of doing Taco Tuesday, do Shawarma Saturday and thank me later.